There were two more murders 15 miles away. When police arrived, they found the telephones and electricity lines. We have a weird homicide. A scene described by one investigator as reminiscent of a weird... Cup of murder. One small thing can blow a whole case wide open. On June 26, 2007, a young woman was found dead at a truck stop. And with the help of a keen-eyed investigator and a speck of blood, her case and the cases of many others would finally be solved. So if you like your coffee hot but your bones chilled, sit back and start your day with a morning cup of murder. Sarah Nicole Holbert was a girl that made sure no one was a stranger. The outgoing and down-to-earth girl was born in Nashville, Tennessee, raised in Elma, Washington, and after finishing with her degree at South Puget Sound Community College in Olympia, she moved back to Tennessee to start her adult life. Unfortunately, while most of that adult life consisted of wonderful things like spending time with friends and family, which now included two beautiful daughters, gardening, crafting, a passion for the outdoors, and treating others with kindness, it also consisted of a new and increasing battle with addiction. Some of the last conversations she had with loved ones left them with concern and worry as they realized her addictions were getting worse. The 25-year-old was spiraling, but her family promised that they would do anything to get her the help she needed. As the story goes, on the night of June 25, 2007, Sarah was near a secluded road in Nashville getting high with a few of her fellow addicts. She asked the group if they had any more, and they refused, so she got up and began walking, trying to find her next fix. Of course, the group didn't notice, and if they did, no one thought anything of the young girl walking off on her own in the middle of the night. She made her way to a truck stop on North 1st Street, a place she found someone dealing in the past, and decided to climb inside of the cab of a shipping truck that pulled up alongside her. Inside was an incredibly dangerous man who was about to make Sarah one of his many victims. She was beaten, bound, sexually assaulted with sex toys and other items, raped, and then finally shot in the head and dumped carelessly from the cab. She took her final breath on June 26, 2007, and her body was found shortly thereafter. Thanks to security cameras, police knew exactly the type of truck that they were looking for. And on July 12, 2007, a detective stopping at that same Nashville truck stop saw the truck that they were looking for. Realizing the driver may just be Sarah Holbert's killer, he walked over to the cab to have a chat with whoever was inside. He noted that the driver was nervous, but remarkably granted the officer permission to look inside of his truck. When he did, he saw what appeared to be blood inside of the cab. The man was arrested and taken into custody so police could run his information and find out just who this Bruce Mendenhall really was. Bruce, born April 14, 1951, grew up in Crawford County, Illinois, and was a married man with two adult daughters. He had a clean record, was a good husband, and cared for his wife, Linda, whose diabetes caused her to lose her sight, and was a long-haul trucker to try and make ends meet. Everyone thought he was a good guy, even running for mayor in 1997, and he seemed to have a completely normal life. At least, that's what it looked like from the outside. While police continued to tear apart his truck, blood was found in several places, including on Bruce's thumb and a large amount of bloody clothing was found tucked away into trash bags. And that wasn't all. Police cataloged 300 items from the truck, including a rifle, knives, handcuffs, latex gloves, several weapon cartridges, tape, a light stick, and a number of sex toys. And when they started DNA testing the blood and clothing, found that it belonged to at least five different women. It seemed that, in trying to solve the brutal murder of Sarah Holbert, they had stumbled across a man who may just be an active serial killer. Faced with the information police had gathered, Bruce Mendenhall, after first trying to make it seem as though two other men committed the murders, confessed to killing not just Sarah Holbert, but five other women. After signing a rights waiver and without an attorney present, Bruce claimed that, while driving throughout the Southeast, he killed young women, mainly sex workers, whom he saw walking alone near truck stops. He went into graphic detail for the officers present, and the information was sent off Indianapolis, where officers there went to the stops that Bruce mentioned, looking for two of the bodies. They found nothing, and the information was forwarded to the FBI for assistance. While being questioned, Bruce also admitted to the murder of a woman named Samantha Winters, whose body was found on June 6, 2007, inside of a trash can at a truck stop in Lebanon, Tennessee. There was also Karma Papura, who was killed on July 11, 2007, at a truck stop in Indianapolis. Her blood was amongst those found in Bruce's truck cab, as was her cell phone, an ATM card, and some of the clothing she was wearing the day she disappeared. Her body was found four years later in Kentucky, not in a trash can in Indianapolis, like Bruce claimed. There was also Lucille Carter, who was found nude in a trash bin on July 1st. The 44-year-old had been shot with a 22 caliber weapon. Now, while Bruce initially cooperated with police, giving information on who he killed and where, he abruptly stopped and gave no further information. But given what they had, they came up with a list of additional deaths that Bruce is suspected of committing. Like the murder of an Atlanta sex worker, Deborah Ann Glover, who was found near a Motel 6 on January 29th, 2007, on a day that Bruce was traveling through the area. Or Sherry Drinkard from Gary, Indiana, whose body was found nude in a snowbank. And Tammy Zawicki, a student in Illinois who vanished from Interstate 80 and was found stabbed to death on September 2nd, 1992. Robin Bishop, who was run over at a truck stop in Fairview, Tennessee on July 1st, 2007, and Belinda Cartwright, a hitchhiker who too was run over, but in a stop in Georgia in 2001, 
and whose composite sketch of the suspect involved bore a striking resemblance to Bruce Mendenhall. On July 28, 2007, the police in Birmingham, Alabama, charged him with the murder of Lucille Carter. And on August 17, 2007, a Wilson County grand jury indicted Bruce for the murder of Samantha Winters. He was later convicted and sentenced to life imprisonment. On August 2, 2007, Bruce waived his rights to a preliminary hearing, and on October 23, 2007, he pleaded not guilty to the murder of Sarah Holbert. While awaiting his trial, his wife died of natural causes, and Bruce got a payout from the insurance company. He took that money and offered to pay two fellow inmates $15,000 to murder, according to some sources, the three associates that Bruce had originally fingered for the murders, and, according to others, three witnesses in his case, and asked that one be performed in a, quote, copycat-like fashion, so police would think that the truck stop killer was still free and active. This, of course, didn't happen, and he was later charged and convicted of conspiracy to commit murder and sentenced to 30 years in February of 2010. He was also accused of soliciting the murder of two detectives involved in his arrest, but those charges were eventually dropped. 2010 was the same year that he was finally found guilty of Sarah Holbert's first-degree murder and sentenced to life imprisonment. When all of the information came to light, Bruce's friends and family had a hard time connecting the man they knew with the cold-blooded killer spoken about at trial. According to his daughter, he never had anything negative to say about sex workers or about their lifestyle. In fact, he rarely even spoke about them at all. To this day, Bruce is still under investigation for murders in Georgia, Illinois, New Mexico, Oklahoma, and Texas. Thank you for joining me in my morning cup of murder. Please join me again tomorrow to hear what terrible thing happened on June 27th. Don't forget to rate and subscribe and let me know how you like it. If you want to help support the podcast, there's always Patreon or just sharing it with your true crime obsessed friends. And remember, stay safe.